On Monday, October 16, 1995, it is a crisp autumn day, perfect for some cycling. The stage between Askerson and Carlsborg is a little over 50 kilometers, approximately half a day's journey for the cyclist and mountaineer Goran Krop. He is on his way to an expedition where he cycled with all his gear, including climbing equipment, from Sweden to Nepal, where he climbed the world's highest mountain without the aid of oxygen, Sherpas, or any other assistance. It took him one year to complete the journey, covering approximately 17,500 kilometers of cycling. The country road winds along the western shore of Lake Vatern, passing through avenues of oak trees. Goran confidently pedals on his well-used crescent bike, pulling his trailer from pack track. Besides Goran, the whole setup weighs 129,145 grams. The more than 8,000 kilometers bicycle trip took half a year. Goran Krop finally reached Yuri, Nepal. It served as one of the initial points of his journey before he continued on to Mount Everest's base camp. In Yuri, he brought all his equipment in a backpack weighing 65 kilograms and continued two weeks by foot to Mount Everest Base Camp. The trail is known for its difficulty due to its steep ascents and descents, rugged terrain, and the need to acclimatize to the high altitude. Goran Krop reached Everest Base Camp in the spring of 1996. At the base camp, he began preparing for his attempt to summit Mount Everest without the use of supplemental oxygen which was a remarkable feat considering the altitude and risks involved. Before Krop, more than 900 people had climbed Mount Everest the easy way with oxygen, and a few had done it the macho way without oxygen, but no one had done it the super macho way, without oxygen, no hired yak to carry gear, no help from Sherpas, no food from the well-stocked mess hall, no flight to Kathmandu. Krop took on the challenge. The journey from base camp begins with an acclimatization process, allowing climbers to adjust to the high altitude and reduce the risk of altitude sickness. Climbers gradually ascend through several camps, each strategically located at higher altitudes, allowing their bodies to adapt to the thinning air. As they progress, climbers face the Kumbu Icefall, a perilous and constantly shifting glacier riddled with deep crevasses and towering seracs. Climbers must cross ladders and navigate through the icefall with utmost caution. On May 3rd, Goran Krop was 7,908 meter high at his camp. There was a brief period between the jet streams and the monsoon in May when it was possible to climb the mountain. The forecast indicated good weather. By 2 p.m., he had reached 8,740 meters. However, he realized that it would take him too long to reach the summit and, as a result, he would be too late to descend safely, putting his life at risk. He had to turn back. At the same time as Krop is on the mountain, the bad weather and poor decisions led to the loss of eight lives, including experienced climbers Rob Hall and Scott Fisher. Many climbers reached the summit later in the day than planned, causing them to be at high altitudes during the afternoon when storms were more likely to occur. As the climbers descended, they encountered a severe blizzard with hurricane-force winds and sub-zero temperatures. The storm stranded numerous climbers on the exposed slopes of Everest, leading to exhaustion and hypothermia. This, however, did not stop Goran from trying to reach the summit again. He sets off again towards the summit at 1 a.m. on May 23rd. It's a fast climb. When he reaches the height where he was forced to turn back the first time, he feels exhausted, but he pushes himself onward. It's now 12 p.m., and he has more time this time. At 1 p.m., he stands on the summit, the top of the world, higher than any other place on Earth. He spends four minutes at the summit, filming himself, and then starts his descent. By 5 p.m., he arrives back at his camp, exhausted. The sense of accomplishment after successfully climbing Everest and returning safely must have been overwhelming. Goran's journey back from Everest didn't end with reaching his camp. After resting for a while, he continued his descent down the mountain, eventually reaching lower altitudes where he could recuperate more comfortably. Goran Krop embarked on an equally remarkable journey back home. He jumped back on his bike once again to start the journey from Nepal back to Sweden 
completing his round-trip expedition. As he pedals on, and the conversation is interrupted only by Gorin's hearty laughter as he recounts stories of rock-throwing Pakistanis, visa complications, crazy dogs, over 100 punctures, and what it's like to stumble around 8,000 meters above sea level surrounded by dead climbers who succumbed to a snowstorm just a few days earlier. <laughs>